What's up guys, David Land here and today we are taking a look at a 1 18th scale IndyCar from the CART series. This is the 1997 Max Pappas MCI Racing RCRO Wells Raynard Toyota Firestone produced by Mini Champs and UT Models. I picked this car up for $28 from the Exit 76 Antique Mall in Edinburgh, Indiana. That was also the place where I found the two Eagles. In fact, these cars were a part of the same lot on that Antique Mall. Somehow I managed to wait a month and this car was still there. I guess that's what happens when you don't tell people where you found the first score, <laughs> specifically of uh, your cart diecast, but I'm so happy to have this car. It's a beauty, uh, a genuinely awesome paint scheme, and it's great to get a Raynard 118, which I have not gotten until this point. So I'm really excited, and let's take a look at it. So firstly, let's take a look at the box, and unfortunately, this box was damaged a bit, not so much on the outside, but on the inside, the styrofoam insert that the car came in uh, was damaged, and uh, it was kind of difficult, it wasn't difficult to get the car out, but it was difficult to get the car out without completely ripping the uh, styrofoam insert to shreds. Thankfully, I did do so, and uh, hopefully, um, maybe I can find another styrofoam insert because it's still in there, but uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get the car back in the box securely. Um, and it did uh, have a little bit of a negative impact on the die cast, but not um, a very bad one. As you can see, this is a photo of the Reynard that uh, is contained in the box. Now I will have a note about that later on in the review, you'll just have to stay tuned, but uh, this car is not quite the same as the car that's actually in the box. Uh, you've got MCI Racing powered by Toyota, and considering that the three cars I found at this lot were Toyota powered, I imagine whom, whoever was selling these had some sort of Toyota connection, uh, or just a uh, was a fan of the Toyota Indy cars. And um, that's why he had all these Toyotas. So you've got MCI, Toyota Motorsports, TRD, PPI, uh, Performance, uh, Precision Performance Inc., R. Sierra Wells, Denso, and Firestone, and a little bit of uh, coffee or something there. Uh, nothing on the bottom. You've got uh, the Legalese here, uh, the produced by UT Models, CART, all the uh, stuff about uh, Firestone and MCI and all the sponsors that they had to make concessions to to produce the die cast. And then uh, on the other side you've got a very 90's uh, looking MCI race car driven by Max Pappas. That looks like it's straight out of a 90's deodorant commercial. Um, so it really sets the period quite well. And then finally you get this awesome studio shot. And I'm going to back up enough so that you can see this all. Um, it says die 118 die cast metal race car and then you've got this Beautiful photo of the MCI Reynard, just fantastic. Um, man, remember when race cars looked like this? But anyway, uh, let's take a look at the actual die cast representation of this car because that's what you guys are all here for, right? Okay, so right off the bat, I made a note while showing off the box that this car is a little bit different than the car shown on the box. This model is actually a 95 Reynard that is dressed up to look like a 97 Reynard, if that makes any sense. The key difference to be able to tell this is right here on the side pod. Now to the untrained eye it looks, well yeah, it looks exactly like it does on the box. But if you take a look at the box and you look right here in front of the rear wheel there's this little pod here and it's a little flick it's a little tiny wing, I shouldn't have said flick, it's more of a wing that's right in front of the rear wheel. Now if we take a look at the 95 Reynard, that flick is really just a flick. It's just a, a solid piece that goes up rather than actually an extension wing in front of the rear wheel. It's not a big deal, but it's something I felt I needed to point out. So let's take a look at this Reynard up close. You've got McPherson Automotive, which is interesting because um, I'm not sure if it's the same McPherson, but uh, there was a McPherson in IndyCar racing that brought the first iteration of Honda uh, IndyCar racing engines to the scene in the 80s. 
You see RC Aero, MCI, PPI, Valvoline. There's not a whole lot of sponsors on this car, so that's why I'm reading them. Uh, and this is a really fun part of the Reynards, is that you've got this, kind of hard to see, but the front wing actually extends, actually this is how it's easier to see, the front wing actually extends underneath the front suspension, uh, probably for some sort of aerodynamic advantage, but it's really interesting to see that kind of fun stuff done, and it, it's a striking um, part of the aerodynamics of this car. Uh, obviously, this scheme is very, very interesting and very, very beautiful. And I would be remiss as we get to the driver's compartment of this car to not talk about this, so I'm going to address it now. The driver of this car is Max Pappas. He ended up driving this car, uh, I think, two seasons. He drove it in, oh, well, he drove it for three. He drove it at the end of 96, uh, the full 97 and 98 seasons. Uh, and then moved to Ray Hall Letterman uh, for 1999. Now the reason Max Pappas got this ride, and it's kind of fitting because it is the weekend of this particular race for IndyCars, but in 1996 um, there was the driver who was the original slated driver for this car was a man named Jeff Krosnoff, an American who had made his name over in Japan and had almost won the 24 hours of Le Mans for Toyota when uh, very similarly to this year his car broke down very uh, close to the end of the race and the race went to a dour Porsche 962. Now Krosnoff got this number 25 car MCI RCR Wells in the 1996 season because of his loyalty to the Toyota brand and of course Toyota powers this car but unfortunately at the Toronto race Krosnoff was killed in an absolutely horrendous accident in which his car uh, hit a tree uh, on the back straightaway. Uh, uh, Marshall was also killed by the name of Gary Arvin in that accident. Just an awful, awful accident. And Max Pappas took over that ride and that's how he got it. So obviously we remember Jeff Krosnoff and that was 20 years ago uh, on the 14th of 2000 or 1996. It's the 20 year anniversary um, this weekend and uh, the 14th of this year was the 20th anniversary of that. But on a happier note, uh, Max Pappas really did impress in this car and uh, he obviously uh, has made very good for himself in terms of the rest of his career. You can see uh, all the logos here. It's a lot easier doing these 118 scale uh, reviews. When I did that Michael Andretti Swift, it was kind of difficult. As you can see, there's a lot of dust on this, and it's not dust, it's it's part of the styrofoam. I remember, remember that I said the styrofoam was coming apart, well it really came apart big time. So you've got some, you do have some con contingency sponsors on here, you've got We Care, Snap-on, STP, Earls, and TRD along with Denso, and you've got MCI all over this car. By the way, the scheme is, this is how you do a paint scheme. The color of this blue is just so striking. I would describe it as electric blue metal flake. Um, and I don't know if the camera is going to capture it particularly how it is in real life. But man, oh man, is it striking. And then just a simple orange stripe that goes down the car and ends in this little star. It just looks fantastic. And this is how you do a paint scheme. You don't have to do a hundred different colors. Just do something striking and bold. And of course you've got the pop-off valve here with Delco Electronics. Now the pop-off valve is a little bit different on this car than it is on the uh, Eagles that I had um, earlier in my reviews. By the way, there's a cart playlist. If you click right there, there, uh, you can check out the full cart playlist. I'll be adding uh, videos to that as I find more cart diecast and more cart content to produce. See, just a ton of styrofoam all over this. Uh, I'll have to do some dusting of it. Um, but then you've got uh, Valvoline, and then the rear wing where you've got 25 NCI and uh, Firestone. This is what the top of the rear wing looks like as I try not to run into the tripod with the car. Now this is the one blemish that unfortunately happened in the box. Uh, here's the rear wing with MCI again. Uh, there's supposed to be a brake light here, and in fact the, um, the gearbox ca uh, cowling, I guess you could call it, here is a bit loose. Um, for whatever reason, probably uh, while it was being moved around, uh, this became loose. Uh, it's pretty solid on there right now, 
but obviously, you know, I'm not going to like roll it around on the ground and make race car noises, so it's going to be fine. But unfortunately, the brake light is missing. That's not a huge deal, and if I hadn't pointed it out, you probably wouldn't have recognized it or noticed it. Uh, here's a look at the wheels, and just, is that fantastic looking or what? Because um, a very striking choice to go with the chrome wheels on this car, and it definitely works. Also interesting to see Firestone. Uh, obviously, they have uh, stuck in the sport for a very long time. Uh, they actually returned in 1995 and um, have been in IndyCar racing ever since. You can also see the uh, the fuel buckeye there. There's not a whole lot else to go over, just trying to get detail on the uh, film. So, film? What a, how old? I guess we are filming this in 1995 or 1997. Here's the bottom of the car. Uh, you can see Mini Champs IndyCar Collection, Indy Reynard. And here's the full bottom of the car. Now, I did mention that this car is a little bit different than the one on the box. It's also different for another reason. And it's kind of hard to tell, but this is the best way I can do it. So, at the risk of making a really lousy video, take a look at this from the front. Now, let me move it and take a look at this car from the front. And it's kind of hard to tell, but the rear wing and the front wings on this car are significantly smaller. That's because uh, many champs for the 95 Reynard uh, model actually produced this car in short oval, uh, in the short oval version of the car. Meaning that you can see on the front wings, this element here is laid all the way back. If you look on the road course version of the car, which they took a photo of, it's moved all the way forward to produce all that downforce, but on a on an oval track for an Indy car, they produce so much downforce on the floor, the wings are really just there to trim the car out, not so much produce extra downforce. And of course on the rear wing, you've got a very small element here and on the side. The actual main plane isn't uh, much different, but it was striking when I looked at this car versus the Eagles, which are in full road racing trim, the Eagles have a gigantic rear wing versus this, which is very, very small. Also, another tip off that it's a short oval version of the car, there are no uh, brake inlets um, modeled on this car. On the Eagles, there are brake inlets on all four wheels. Of course, on an oval, you're not doing quite that much braking, so you don't need to cool off the brakes with brake inlets. So, that is a look at the Max Pappas. Oh, I almost forgot. You also have an aerial there and the front wheels turn back and forth. So that has been a full review of the Max Pappas MCI RCR Wells race car from 1997. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please hit the like button and also subscribe. I try to do as much cart IndyCar content as possible because man this was my childhood this series and it's very very important to me to share the history of the sport through whatever means I can do so. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.